Alright, so to get you started with how to import, first go into your system, go to Inventory Configuration Settings, and you're going to want to make sure you activate the Product Attribute and Variant functionality. Once you do that, it will change the interface of the product to give you a tab here called Variants. Variants allow you to ascribe an attribute and an attribute value to a product. An example of an attribute could be size. An example of a value could be uh, 39. An example of another attribute would be color, and it could be black. So by creating these, you're essentially uh, creating unique products. And I'm going to show you how I understand how to do this out of the box today importing this um, and I'm also as I mentioned waiting from our technical team to understand if there's an easier way to do it so first things first I have your list of products here right so you're gonna Odoo's not gonna know how to read all this information you're gonna have to restructure it uh, and it will be a bit easier I think once you do to spend the time restructuring it so for instance sure you have all these products but you're going to have to first import high level stuff like what kind of colors does the system understand and comprehend? What sizes is the system capable of understanding and comprehending? Things like that. So if we go to our database we just created, which is here, uh, we look at configuration attributes. Here is where you'll be able to list all the types of attributes you have. Size, color, you may want to use fields like um, you know, CN size, AU size. So in order to do that, let's look here. We'll, we'll just create a new, a new sheet. You'll go to first. Yeah. Also make sure you're in debug mode. I'm just going to go like that, type it into the browser up there, right next to the exclamation uh, question mark. You can also access debug mode by going to settings, activate developer mode here. Once you do that, you're going to see when I go to Product attributes again. If I hover over this, it gives me the name of the field. So field semicolon name, and then create variant. So we don't don't worry about that. Just focus on the name for now. So all you'll do here is type in name, and then you'll list all your types here. So we may want to say uh, color, CN size, oops, AU size. Same mistake. Is that right? So AU size, CN size, perfect. So you're gonna see very simple. Quick download is an attachment, CSV, import, load. Yep. Automatically brings those values into the system. That's step one. Step two is importing all the different possible values that each of these attributes can have. We do that by going to attribute values and you'll see here we need a field for attribute ID and then we need a field for the value of that ID. So for this we're going to change this to attribute ID name right because name is the name of the value that we're going to be describing here and we can say color um, I'm just going to do something simple here. I have this already created, so I have all this, some generic sizes. Um, I'm going to actually change this to CN size. And then color. And this is your job to go through and organize all the possible CN sizes across all your different products. Organize all the possible AU sizes across all your different products. Make sure they're listed here. Right, you could have CN size, and then you could have a um, right AU size, and if we go pull an AU size here, maybe this one, just like that. So once we do that, once you have all that organized, all your different possible color combinations, all that, download as a CSV file, and go to attributes, import, load the file here, test it, everything seems valid, import. Now I have a list of all possible values. So 
essentially we just created the foundation in terms of how the data is structured. Next step is to go to our actual product and here we're going to import a product. So if I go to, I think it's template, here are the standard fields we're going to import on the product, right? Um, an example is we don't have this, I think is barcode. So to get the field name, same thing. As long as you're in developer mode, you just hover over the field. Anything in bold is a mandatory field, meaning you have to import a value into it. So you must understand what the name is. In this instance, it's name of the field and put it on the Excel sheet. Here is type. Here is catig underscore ID. Then getting into the attributes. Here is attribute underscore line underscore IDS. That's tricky here, but you put this and then you put the actual name of the field, which is attribute underscore ID. So you'll see on the sheet, I have attribute underscore line underscore IDS slash attribute ID. And then attribute line IDS underscore uh, attribute underscore line underscore IDS slash value IDS. So here I've structured the actual information, right? I have color size per product. And then I have color size per product, color size per product. So essentially, you're going to break all these out all the way down the line. And I could have, um, I don't have this, I have something called um, CN size instead in this new import. Important to take note of that. So just like that, I go file, download, so import, oops, import from the product page, the most recent one, test the import, no match found for name black in field product attributes. So it's telling me I made a mistake. Color black, color black, color black, color black. Do I not have a color black in my attribute values? I don't. I can always just go like this. See? So the system automatically recognizes, hey, you don't have that. So I have to go here and say the color I want my attribute value and then black. And now when I go back to my products, import, load file, everything seems valid now because this that is in the system, import it. And just like that, we have our different products. Open one up, go to our barcode and came in, our internal reference, all this information. If you want to import sale prices, just hover over list price, right? Add it here. Make sure it's here on the first import. Um, if it's not there on the first import, it requires another strategy to import. You have to use something that's called external IDs to import without duplicating the product. An external ID, an example of that would be, um, where do I have it? I'll have to create one for you. But important enough is variance, color, CN size 39, right? Black 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So I imported those products here. These are unique products with unique SKUs. Is that a SKU? No, those are not unique SKUs, but you should use internal references SKUs. And if you have a custom field for whatever this may be, you can create a field with Odoo Studio for it. But these are all unique products, as I mentioned. You may decide you have, um, you know, 10 units of this particular type of shoe, right? The black and 43 on hand. If I go to my inventory, I'll see here that this particular SKU, which is the black and 43, I have 10 units on hand. If I go to sell it, you'll see that it would be there as well. And I can see right, my quantity on hand here. So that in a nutshell is how you import products. That's the first time you import. If you wanna import again and say update the sale price, then you have to use the external IDs. To do that, you have to go to action, 
you have to export export all data make sure you type ID here and export that file that's going to list out a list of the essentially a funky number but that this is the internal reference number in the system for that unique record this is the ID that Odoo uses to identify this particular record in the system and if you need to go back and map it so what you'll do here is you'll actually change that oops let me just do this again change that to ID list out your IDs here at the product level right so we have I'm going to do it down here that product right and I just know because I can line them up three is three four four five five so essentially these replace the name once you do that you can let's say we want to add we have list price you know we'll say 1250 1100 999 oops 12 some crazy values here. This price, um, maybe we also, I'll show you how to create custom fields quick while we're at it. Inventory products, uh, let's make sure Studio is installed quick. Click install. Yep, sure. Once Studio is installed, you can create custom fields. Inventory, master data, products, open up a record. Let's just say we want to create a, uh, a generic text field to keep it simple. Um, you can click text, drag and drop it. I want to put it underneath barcode. And name this field whatever we want maybe um do i like um customer favorite and there's different fields types right like customer favorite is either yeah you know if it's yes or no you may want to actually add a selection field and say yes or no and i can even do that here as well give me my two possible selection points it'll drop that field i have either yes or no I go here, oops. Customer favorite, and we'll delete our original text field, or although we could, I'll create something else, maybe, um, um, maybe external, external ID. If you wanna track that at the product record, you can. So I have two possible fields right now to get the technical name of the field. This is the technical name for external ID. So of course, I'm going to add that here. That's the field name. Just like list price is a field name, this is the field name. And I need to get the field name of our favorite customer favorite. Again, more, make sure you're in debug. And I'll add that here. So is it a customer favorite? Um, very, let's see how we can do this. So line two, right? So say, um, yes, yes, no, 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 yes. And then I'll have external IDs here. So I can say, quickly pull it. And I'm gonna, yeah, as I mentioned, I'll get back to you to see if there's an easier way to import all these attributes without having to go through each one and structure it in such a way. Um, so let me get back to you on that. But once we did this, then we can simply go to our, back to our product template, products, import, load file. There's our latest with our list price, studio, all that, test, everything seems valid 
import and just like that we've changed the unit price 1250 1100 999 and we've also defined here our external ID and whether or not it's a customer favorite. And you can see that all of these fields are now dynamic, right? I could say search group by um, customer favorite list view. Show me everything that's yes. And they totally make those sum up the sale price of those. But so you can see just like that, it'll, it's all reportable. Group by, you know, for example, external ID. There it is. Maybe we just want to filter out, create a custom filter for all products that are customer favorites. Save it as a search result. So now every time I come into my products, I can quickly show my favorites just like that. So that's an example of how you can create custom fields and bring that information into the system. If you have any additional questions, let me know. Happy to, to help you.